So there's a few things that can go wrong with a solenoid valve. This is a DC solenoid valve, direct current. So you'll notice that there's two different colored cables, which signifies that it can only be wired one way. They're used for battery operation. I need a coil. So that's the valve that comes with the Hunter node. So this is a coil, which is an AC coil. And so an AC coil can be wired any way around. That's why the cables are the same color. So that's the difference between an AC and a DC coil. So a solenoid valve can be operated with an AC coil or a DC coil. The AC coil requires a controller that delivers mains power. The DC coil operates from a nine volt battery. So these are used with Hunter nodes or you can use them with Hunter XC hybrids. Uh, or obviously other brand controllers that can actuate a 9 volt coil. The way this operates is it gets sent a pulse, it lifts that pin, so I don't know if you can see that, but a valve turns on from a change in pressure, which happens when a pin lifts up, so that can happen manually. If this is just sitting in rest and it's closed, if you turn that about a quarter turn, it lifts the pin enough for the valve to actuate. That's simulating what would happen electronically when electricity is sent through and it lifts the pin and locks it closed. The way that an AC coil operates is to send electricity through it continuously, so it's actually lifting and dropping the pin rapidly enough that it it stays up whereas this lifts it locks it and it stays up while that pin is up the valve stays open so when you have a power failure on this coil the valve will close if you have a power failure which is very unlikely for a 9 volt battery to fail after opening that'll just stay open so that's ac and dc that's that's its own thing if you're having trouble with a valve it's usually going to be that it's stuck open or it's stuck closed or it's leaking so uh, if it's leaking it's either going to be leaking out of the front which means there's an issue inside or it's going to be leaking out of the side which means there's a diaphragm issue or it's going to be leaking from part of the valve which means it's split if it's a split valve that's pretty easy to diagnose you just see the split take the bonnet off have a look replace it if it's leaking out of the valve there's an issue either with the coil or the diaphragm so the diaphragm's either split or there's a rock stuck in there or this coil's got something stuck underneath it so the best thing to do if you're having an issue with your valve is to isolate your water so you'll have a bet ball valve or something similar here to stop the water from coming through and then you'll take the whole valve apart so i'll just grab a drill because we didn't really prepare for this oh get fucked Would tom cruise have to deal with this having issues with this at all yeah it's fucked yeah. Let's see if we can find a screwdriver that's not fucked. Look, it would have been ideal to be able to open that valve using a drill. It'd be even more ideal to fucking have a screwdriver. So the reason I chose this valve is because it's only got four screws. If you've identified that you're having a problem, you basically want to take the whole valve apart and have a look around inside it. Make sure that the diaphragm's not damaged, there's no rocks underneath it. Give it a good clean. The other thing to be aware of as well, if you do need to buy parts for a solenoid valve, the way the manufacturing set up, it's almost worth buying a whole valve, especially if you're in the trade. There's no point buying a diaphragm or just a coil because usually you'll need the other part eventually anyway. So there is the inside of the valve. So every valve is going to look different, be it Hunter, Toro, Rainbird, or any of the other valves that are in the market. So that's the diaphragm. So what we've done is we've opened up the valve to have a look inside. Now, what you'll be looking for is any irregularities with the diaphragm. So if there's any um, tears or nicks along there, if there's any debris or any rocks in there. If there's not, put it all back together. That's all fine. Make sure that that's all there. So you, you're going to put it back together the same way you took it apart. These are good. They've got a, I guess there's only one way it can go back. And then you make sure that there's no debris inside where the coil was, which it all looks pretty good. So if we've taken this all apart and it's not operational, there's nothing going wrong inside there, then it means this coil is probably not working. So what you want to do is take the coil back to an electrical source and get it right back to the controller. And turn the controller onto a station, so put station one on or run station one manually and touch the wires to it. And then if that doesn't click, then the coil's damaged. If the coil's working and it's not actuating, then it's likely that there's something wrong inside or you don't have enough inlet pressure. So they're pretty basic, really. Make sure you put all the parts back in as well. That white thing there actually belongs inside this valve. If you've got a problem with the valve, it's either leaking, it won't turn on, or it won't turn off. They're your three problems. If it won't turn on, it's likely that it's the inlet pressure is not enough, or there's something wrong with the electrics. So uh, if you try to run it through a controller and it doesn't turn on, but then you turn the coil a quarter turn and it does turn on, then the coil is electronically damaged. If you do the quarter turn and it doesn't turn on, then it's likely that it's something inside's causing trouble. So there's a blockage inside or the inlet pressure is not high enough. If it's on but won't turn off, it's very likely that there's debris holding this coil up or there's something holding the diaphragm up and stopping it from closing. In some cases, it's, it will turn off, but it won't turn off all the way. So you'll find that you've just got this constant leak. It's because the diaphragm's tried to stop close all the way, but there's a rock stuck in here. Uh, then the last thing is if it's leaking. So uh, that leak can happen from that rock that I just talked about, or there could be a split in the valve. So the valve box could be full. That's pretty much it.